use a sub that doesn't work. So it's come out of my old car and it's got a common problem that you get with all of these, which is that the connectors here and here are, um, well, they're broken. And I think what happens is it's quite common with subs that uh, people obviously have them in the boot, they have the cables plugged in here and then the sub moves around, bangs against something in the boot and it bends the cables and ultimately damages these connectors which are in fact loose. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is basically take this panel off and hopefully, hopefully solder a wire on to where, where, to where these join onto the circuit board and then hopefully add a new connector, probably under here somewhere. Or there, depending on what's behind the wood. So let's get the panel off, see what we're dealing with. Go and get a screwdriver. That is definitely a wood screw. <laughs> So I have actually had this out before, so hopefully I should be able to do this repair. There we go. And there's the board we're dealing with. Okay, so these are the input connectors here, obviously. And what we're aiming to do is get a solder joint on here. Now, I just wanted to check. Uh, obviously, this has just got one speaker. It's a subwoofer. So I imagine it will only take a mono feed. So what we're going to do is just test whether uh, these are wired in parallel. Because if it's mono, then I expect that both of the signal lines will be connected together. So let's put the test meter on. That's on, that's on continuity test. So are these two continuous? No. Interesting. So those two, which I thought would be in parallel, are actually separate connections. So I think what we're going to do is join on two separate wires to each of them. Just got this normal figure eight wire that I like to use. It's real copper. It's the main thing. I'm just going to split the two wires apart here. Okay. It's my wire stripping tool. I absolutely love it. it works so well. It's only about a tenner on uh, eBay. Just twist those ends over. Uh, that's really just to stop them getting all messy before I start soldering. If you don't twist them, the uh, little strands of copper go all over the place. I'll just fold these over a little bit just to make a smaller contact area to solder onto the board. Okay. This big area this big area here that's the ground plane to solder the ground wire onto here and then if we look to this large connector here and this one here these are the left and right audio channels, which oddly aren't in parallel. Um, so we will wire them separately to uh, to each separate end of, of this connector here. So put the soldering line on. <clears throat> just tinning the ends of the wire here. That uh, that means just uh, melting solder onto the ends of them. Uh, it's best to do this first because it, uh, it helps keep the end of the wire together when you're soldering it on. And also it helps the solder flow onto the joint. So... Um, with this type of soldering, generally you want, you know, a, a tin surface on both sides. So now what I'm doing is uh, melting the solder joint on the on the actual board, and then bringing the wire towards it so that they both melt together. And then once they have sort of made a, a, a nice flowing joint, I'll uh, take the soldering iron away, and I'll normally blow on it as well to cool it down nice and quickly. There you go. And for the signal wire, 
Just flow that solder joint there. And now we're going to do another one. So, just snip that off there. So I'll show you that technique with my fingers again. So. There we go. Hmm. You always have to tip the cut off piece out. Sometimes it doesn't come out. These stuck. There we go. Right. And the one. Yeah, you have to make sure you get that end out, otherwise uh, you won't be able to strip the wire. I'm just going to twist the ends again and fold them over. And we tin the end again. Again, this is just uh, to flow solder onto the onto the wire uh, to enable it to flow easier when we uh, join it onto the circuit board. Uh, you want to minimise the time you have your soldering iron heating the circuit board because uh, it can damage components. So this is the flux, by the way. Uh, flux really helps with jobs like this because uh, especially old dry solder, if it's corroded, um, sometimes doesn't flow. Literally flood it with... Okay, so for the main signal. So I'll just hold that uh, soldering iron on the joint, wait until it melts and bring the wire to it. It's a ground plane in this corner here, so I'm going to just blob a bit of solder on there. I'm using this ground plane in the corner uh, just because it's getting a bit crowded where the other connections are and I uh, thought this one would be a bit easier to solder onto. Sorry about the bad camera angle. Right. Okay, now we have a close inspection. So it looks okay. Now, so what I was going to do is install this plate here, but there's no way to reach round behind. Um, in fact, let's just have another. Pop the camera in there so we can see it properly. Look. There's my test meter beeping. Yeah, there's. Nothing in there. This one's ground here. This one's ground. This one's the center pin of the right channel. And this one's the centre pin of the left channel, and then this one's ground for the left channel. So, because I can't seem to... Presumably this is for acoustic reasons, there's a box here. And a very small hole. Okay. Well, for now, I'm going to put it back together as it is.
So what I'm going to do is just solder them onto this little back plate that I've got. Even though it's a temporary solution, I'm then going to put inline RCA jacks on when I bought some. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to buzz it out to see which one was ground because I've forgotten. Um, so, test lead. Okay, so we're on continuity test. So, I'm just going to test one of these leads and the other one against ground. So that's ground. It's not the inside bit. Okay, so that's ground, that one. Solder that. Don't really need flux for this because it's brand new bare copper, it should be fine. So the uh, technique here is to heat the joint with the soldering iron and then bring the solder onto the actual wire itself. Um, you don't, you don't want to melt the solder with the soldering iron. You want to heat the item that you're soldering and then melt the solder with the item that you are soldering. Um, if you do that, the flux works better and it will flow a lot easier. So. Okay. Just inspecting the joint there, making sure they're not touching. Oh, it looks good to me. Now we'll do the other channel. I think you only really need one because, like I say, it's mono, but uh, we'll do them both just in case. So, on the continuity test again. That one on there. And that's ground. Let's just check we haven't got ground on the other one as well. That would be bad. No. Okay, so that's ground. What I'm doing here is actually twisting the, uh, the copper wire around the contact just to keep it in place while I solder it. Um, you don't have to do that, but it does make it easier. Can be a bit fiddly though. So now you see that soldering technique. I'm heating the joint with my soldering iron and then bringing the solder to it. Okay, turn the soldering iron off. Inspect the joint. Looks good to me. We just want to make sure the solders flowed onto both sides of the connection and uh, and that neither of the two uh, separate wires are, are touching or bridged at all. So we'll replace this uh, little panel with uh, inline RCA jacks at a later date. <laughs> 